One very effective way to do side laterals is with the cables with a slight modification. Now, if you've seen Dorian Yates Blood and Guts, you'll recognize this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna rather lean at an angle. I'm gonna be stabilized because my body weight's just gonna be pulling against my hand, right? So I'm gonna be here. When I'm gonna be at the bottom with the handle, I'm gonna have tension pulling on my shoulder at the start of the movement, all the way into the top of the movement as opposed to a standing lateral when you're at the bottom. There is nothing loading the head of the, of the delt. It's not until you start coming up, and the further up you get, the more it increases. It's gonna be a lot more uniform here. It's about at a 45, shoulders loaded. All right, heavy duty crew, it is Sunday, September 22nd. We are back at P5. It's late, it's like 8.30 p.m. Busy day, so. Train close to the house, it's chest and shoulders. Following the, uh, the course of the last couple workouts with the new additional day in the split, we're gonna increase our volume a little bit. So we're gonna add an extra movement for sure for chest. And we'll see how shoulders feel after the press and the lateral raise. If we can add something else in, that'll be effective. That's not just gonna be junk to make me more beat up and tired, but um, prep started earlier in the week on Thursday and my food has been so high. It's been a real challenge uh, putting down this much food. So. Hopefully that will translate to some training performance. We'll see. And then notice my wrist is feeling a little wonky. Not sure if I slept on it or something at the house went down. So I'm not sure how this press is gonna end up. I'll keep warming up, but I know that my working set will be at 300 pounds or more. So if the wrist gives me any trouble, we'll have to forego it this training session, but I'm just gonna get to work. Well, I'm gonna do it anyway. I did a couple warm ups leading up to this. My wrist feels okay. It's fucking heavy, I'm scared. instant upper body pump. So this being the first chest and shoulder day on the new prep split, whatever, I decided to go back to a different side lateral variation. I noticed that with the lateral raise machine, the way that the, um, the weights are set up on the implement, you lose tension at a certain point at the top. The load isn't high there. One very effective way to do side laterals is with the cables with a slight modification. Now, if you've seen Dorian Yates Blood and Guts, you'll recognize this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna rather lean at an angle. I'm gonna be stabilized because my body weight's just gonna be pulling against my hand, right? So I'm gonna be here. When I'm gonna be at the bottom with the handle, I'm gonna have tension pulling on my shoulder at the start of the movement all the way into the top of the movement as opposed to a standing lateral when you're at the bottom. There is nothing loading the head of the, of the delt. It's not until you start coming up. And the further up you get, the more it increases. It's gonna be a lot more uniform here. So we're gonna start doing an isolateral uh, cable raise. Cable, isolateral cable lateral raise. Yeah, it's a lot. It's about at a 45, shoulders loaded. pause it because I want more. <clears throat> Had to use some momentum there. That's all right. <sighs> uh. 
So notice there was no, no pause in between the two sides as my left side is weaker. So I want to approach my right side fatigued. Didn't add any modification on it, no rest pause. Still beat the reps. But that's how you balance stuff out. Very direct. All right, so we did our two movements for shoulders. Um, in retrospect, next time I come in and train this session, I'll be doing the side lateral with a drop set to make sure that I get every ounce of depletion or rather I tap into the ultimate inroad possible. Um, it's not something I do on a lot of muscle groups. I don't do drop sets on hardly anything, but it's something I've implemented on my shoulders in the past. It's, you have these certain breakover points and I've talked about it before in training where when you can't break over, how many more reps could you get in the final portion of a rep if you could get past that breakover point? And that's my theory is why I would add this drop set because I can't think of other movements that would be beneficial uh, for my shoulders because it would just be overlap. It would just be another variation of doing the exact same thing. Therefore, I'll make the movement that I've picked more potent by adding in that kind of modification. So I'm also going back to starting chest training on a fly. I've liked this in the past, really like it. So I've already had a nice heavy pressing movement with the shoulders and um, I want to move in and, and just hit a fly. That way I'll do my two fly variations and then I'll do the tricep dip press for chest and shoulders. And that way I'll, I'll be fatigued and I won't need as much of a heavy load. So I'll kind of minimize my fatigue in that way for the sessions total. In true Primark slash heavy duty fashion, I'm going to pick a weight that I've never done before. So I got 250 pounds on here and I'm going to rip it up. But first, got to rip it up. Now you know that nicotine is a powerful, uh, what would you call it? Mm, nerve. Nah, it fucking helps with strength. <laughs> Look into it. <laughs> Look into it. A lot of these guys chew nicotine gum in strength sports, actually powerlifting strongman type shit. Absolutely uh, helps with the neural component, so. Should I make it nastier? Make it nasty. I think I will. Look at that pose, looks like it goes Super Saiyan. Uh, that was so direct and so intense. I just really like starting chest off with flies, man. You don't have that compounded component of pushing using the triceps, the shoulder engagement, the rotator cuffs, all that stuff coming into play. There's none of that. It's fly. It's squeeze the chest <laughs> let the lats fold back and let them open up let them fold back let them open up that's awesome so i'm gonna go ahead and move on to a low angle fly and then a press and i think we're finished uh, never underestimate the power or rather the drain that those 
drop sets can put on you. My chest is, wow, it's absolutely smoked. So this, this, these low angle flies are something in the past I've been able to do quite heavy. I think 35 and 42 and a half were some of my last PBs in the past. But just coming up here and doing the warm up set or the feeler set rather with like 20 pounds, I felt heavy as shit. Like my, my chest all across the top is just absolutely smoked. Puppy. Sorry, I'm just admiring the uh, the fibers under there, considering I'm not really ultra lean yet or dry. There's a lot going on under there, which is good. That means it got inflamed, it got full of blood. But I think what's even more impressive is that big guy in the mirror over there. That son of a bitch is big. So if 20 felt real heavy, that means I gotta do 30. And if I do more than six reps, then that means I should have went heavier. This isn't going to be fun at all. So yeah, we could have definitely gone into that 42 and a half or 35 range, but that's good to know. We'll beat that next session. Well, we'll go to our tricep dip machine and we'll do the other variation. Last workout, I showed you guys how to use it for triceps. This time we're gonna go over there and hit it for chest and delts. So we'll finish off getting the underneath of the pecs and those front delts working and just finish off this session solid. But it's been tremendous so far. That shoulder press move felt the lightest it's ever felt. I was super impressed by how it moved at the beginning of the reps. More weight than I've ever used on that fly machine. And frankly, one of the best contractions I've ever felt. So much so that I wanted more and did a super set. The slow angle fly, I was able to dig in. Felt amazing as well. And I was super strong on it, stronger than I thought I was gonna be. So that's that's fantastic. And the, uh, can't forget about the isolateral lateral raise, which is quite uh, exquisite as well. Left my shoulders feeling very rounded, so I'll see you guys on the dip machine. All right, so pretty much everything that I would teach is just gonna be the opposite of what I showed you on the arm training day. And I went over that. The elbows are gonna be flaring out into the side. You might be tempted to flip these handles wider, thinking that that's gonna be a better option. It's not. So if the handles are closer, when I'm at the bottom of the rep, I have a greater contraction on the chest. My range of motion is longer as opposed to if they're here than to if they're here. I mean, just doing that, I can feel my chest contracting more. And it goes back to, you know, Mincer's old teaching about the incline barbell press. The wide grip is not beneficial for the chest. You're going to feel the chest when the hands are closer together, closer toward that shoulder width. These handles right at shoulder width. So that's what we want. I'm going to go heavy, probably heavier than I should. I don't have the belt on this machine, but the angled seat forward allows you to push yourself into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And frankly, I'm gonna go for fucking five or six reps because this is more weight than I think I've ever put on it. But I'm just following the trend today. I came in here, and smashed everything. So let's go, let's go. I don't know if that was a train in my ears or if the machine was actually squealing, but I could hear it. Could have been both, you know? And way less in the triceps, just like I said it would be. 
I could feel them toward the end as my chest was really fatiguing, but nothing like with those elbows tucked when I was training the long head. So same piece of equipment, two different training days. A claw hammer has two sides. You can pull nails with it or you can drive them. And it's the same thing with some of this equipment. If you know what you're doing, it can be a multi-purpose tool. But a lot of you boys are trying to use hammers for the jobs of saws and trying to <laughs> Tightened screws with wrenches and all kind of silly shit. Knock it off. I think to finish up the day, I'm going to try to do one set of biceps and one set of triceps. You're gonna see how that affects everything because now that I've moved to the four day split, the frequency of repeating the same training day has extended, right? So it'd be every, I think 15 days. Whereas now, since I have that extended period before the repeat, I wanna sprinkle a couple sets in between when I would get back to that initial day. So arms was two training sessions ago and I have legs coming up, then it'll be arms again. So I wanna put it to the test and see if I can squeeze in. To see if, I, if a set of biceps and triceps in the middle of the cycle would be beneficial or we're gonna test it and see whether it's detrimental or beneficial. So since I did preacher curls on arm day, I'm gonna go ahead and use that seated bicep machine which is very similar to the uh, unilateral that we have the bilateral machine that i have at the kidney and a muscle and i'm going to go ahead and do a standard tricep push down with the bar so catch you on that you're going to go ahead and hit this for what i think is probably the heaviest i've ever done it i mean that'll be our our uh measuring stick you know for the training sessions to come wow i'm looking absolutely huge right here it's the lighting it's that downcast lighting gives a little shadow in there in there makes you look big but uh let's get it Biceps numb. I think I had one leg tucked, the other one out. Oh, the seat is moving. I don't like that. Yeah, the bicep was spasming and doing all kind of weird shit right there. Totally numb. Oh, wow. I don't think I'm even gonna record the next set. We're gonna do a little set of uh, tricep pushdowns. But honestly, I think this is redlining it. Cause I can kind of feel a, a deep down achy feeling in the arms. And granted, they got used on the flies, you know, and the pressing as well. And we had the arm specific training day and there was some incorporation and training back. So we're definitely reaching the tolerable threshold here and we'll see how this impedes upon our, our progression. But uh, you know, I'm trying to go to the next level. So I need to push the envelope a little bit, find out what's possible. You won't know unless you try. <sighs> You'll never know how far you got until you're looking back from where you started. So looking back to where you started. Well, all right, gentlemen, this was Path of the Primark episode. Eric fill in the blank. Chest and shoulders, late Sunday night. and to go upstairs, hit the shower, get home, catch my wife while the kids are sleeping. <laughs> yeah. You know what's gonna happen. Yeah, baby! Until next time. <laughs>